I'm Vanessa Ruck, the girl on a bike. In today's video, we're going to be looking at riding skills on a motorcycle. So if you are a track rider, a road rider, or even an off-road rider, today we're going to be going through some techniques and drills that you can do to try and improve your confidence and your skill on a motorcycle. So there's a little bit of a backstory to this video. Now you might remember last year I did my first ever track day with John McAvoy and Fast Bikes and I did get my knee down, you can check that video, super proud of it, but John has never been off-road. So I thought what better victim <laughs> to take into, I think you <laughs> He's very enthusiastic, we can see this. So we are here at the Triumph Experience Centre in Wales, which is a place that you can come and do a whole load of off-road training, get on some of the bigger bikes. You'll have seen in my Thousand Juniors series that I've done a lot on the Tiger 900, and we're gonna be putting this guy through some off-road drills. So, how are you feeling? Well, I've, 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 I've worked it out. You, you just do some of this, don't you? Like, yeah. Is that pretty much? How does yeah. the engine sound like? It goes brum brum. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely excited about this. I've never gone off-road before. Obviously, I've ridden on tarmac my whole entire motorcycling miles. Every single mile I've ever done has been on tarmac. Wow. Apart from the odd gravel trap at racetracks. But, um, which were terrifying. Which are terrifying. But yeah, so no, really excited about this. I've heard, you know, it's, it's the thing a lot of people do to, to develop their skills and stuff like that. So yeah, revved up. So this guy, on my first ever track day, I've got my leathers on, made me get down onto the tarmac and rub my bum on the ground. I still, to this day, I'm not too sure whether this was some kind of trick. You can see it in my other video. But it means that revenge is best served today, I think. Should we do it? Let's go. <laughs> Come on. Cool, we've magicified ourselves to the training area at the Triumph Experience place. So we have two Triumphs in front of us. So we are on the Tiger 900 Rally Pro. This is a, a really good sized adventure bike for building confidence. First time for you going off-road. So it is quite a big bike to be going off-road for the first time, but you are a big guy, so I have no doubts in your capability. Key reason why we've picked this bike is because it is slightly on the smaller side. 900 still has loads of power but it gives you a bit more confidence with the weight and the power in the throttle. It also has the off-road mode and the off-road pro mode, and that changes the traction, the throttle output, and the ABS on the bikes to give you better conditions when you're going onto the dirt and the mud. It's gonna feel like quite a different riding position for you. So the plan of today, if you're up for it, okay. is to do a whole load of mini challenges as okay. far as techniques. Now, these are all challenges that you lot can do at home as well. And working on these sort of techniques and exercises is a really good way to improve the foundation of your riding. Now, I've done some pretty extreme riding on this exact bike, to be honest, and the foundation work of the balance, the clutch control, the throttle control, the maneuverability of the bike, I don't think I could have done those things if I hadn't worked on those things before. So hopefully it's going to give you a really good kind of foundation. And I think probably we should have a goal at the end of the day of seeing if we can get both your tyres off the ground because there is a jump right behind us. Yep. Uh, and you did challenge yourself to that initially. I did. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I'm up for that. A whole yeah. series of exercises. What do you reckon? I'm up, I'm up for that. Yeah, it's great. Actually, to be honest, I was just saying uh, that the uh, it's, it's good to be next to a bike that's actually a normal size for me <laughs> it feels like a normal size so yeah i'm really looking forward to trying it out i've seen this bike obviously we're not we're not unfamiliar with triumphs on on, on the magazine and uh and this is a new engine i've not had any experience with and obviously the whole genre of motorcycle that is brand new to me so i'm i'm, I'm ready to go amazing okay i think the first thing we should probably do is make sure that you know how to get onto and sit on an off-road motorcycle because i'm guessing you have no idea what to do with these these mm-hmm with the clutch. With the clutch. Uh, yeah, I would use. I would. I would use. But when you're once you've pulled away. Yeah. So we've I'm got... guessing you're very much like that. Yes. Not like that. Yes. So that's the first thing we're going to get you okay. to do. So I'd say let's get you on the bike. Okay. Now this is a totally standard Tiger Triumph. We've got Michelin Anarchy Wild rubber on it, so you've got good traction. This is a bike that's ready to go. So let's get you on the bike. So when you're off road, you have. I often describe being off road as being 
a continual process of trying to stay in the direction you were planning to go in the first place. Okay. Because there's a lot of terrain and rocks and mud and sand and puddles that are making the bike want to go all over the place. So you as a rider are continually trying to get the bike to go in the direction you were initially going. Okay. And with a bike that has a 900cc engine, there's a lot of power and clutch control is going to be a really important way to keep yourself safe and feather that power and okay. find the traction. Now, if you think about a motorcycle tire, you've got a big trunky tread on these Anarchy Wilds and the whole time your tire is spinning really, really quickly, it's got no chance of biting. So you've got to find the traction with the clutch and the throttle. So an important part of that is that your fingers always want to be covering. Okay. You'll work out what's more comfortable for you, whether you want to be one finger or two fingers. But I want you to always think about having them on the controls. It means yeah. that if you have yeah. a wobble, if you whiskey throttle it, that is an immediate safety. Yeah, what's whiskey throttle? Um, is where you drink some whiskey whilst you're riding along. We probably shouldn't do that here, but it happens. You know, it's, so, it's like, oops, the whiskey I, fell liking, in my mouth. I'm liking this even more. <laughs> it's where you wobble and yeah. accidentally... Okay, jerk the because, throttle. Because okay, yeah, yeah. your throttle is how you're holding on and you're wobbling over yeah, okay. something, that, it's yeah. quite easy to open sense. it by you mistake. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, and using the clutch, you can yeah, stop yourself going into a hedge. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and you can also then balance the power of the throttle yeah. to keep yourself moving and when you start to get to more extreme you know really big hill climbs you need to keep that engine singing yeah you don't want to be coming off to find the throttle yeah. you use the clutch use to the feather clutch it rather than the so throttle. keep the bike singing going up but okay. we probably won't get to that today uh, we're going to be doing some exercises on braking so we can go into that and then you, your balance on the bike obviously once you're riding you're going to be standing up a lot you're used to being Yes. In a little ball looking Sound. forwards. So you're going to have to work out, find your balance point on the bike standing up. So weight on the pegs. You want your feet to be agile. You don't put your feet on the pegs and keep them there permanently. Yep. They'll move around to change gear, to brake, to find your balance. Yeah, yeah. And you want to be quite fluid on the bike, using your weight to, to turn your hips, your shoulders, you and will. using your weight to, to steer the bike. Okay. A lot of people think that you steer a bike like this. Yeah. You steer the bike as one, as, yeah. a, as a unit. Yeah. So your body position and the weight, like once you start trying to do really tight turns, you're using your weight to get the bike over, to which is very okay. different to a, like an inside yeah. knee down. Yes, yeah. So that's gonna be a learning curve. Yeah. Okay. Exercise number two is before we even get on the bike. And again, it's worth practicing this at home. So you're gonna start the engine up and I want you just to do a tight circle with the bike. Okay. You're going to be using the clutch, bit of throttle on, nice and gentle, yeah. and walk it around it in a circle. Be careful with your front brake, because if you grab your front brake, it can be a little bit bitey because it pulls in on the suspension. Okay. So just yeah. sort of gentle throttle, walking around in a circle. And this is where your fingers... Yeah. So I've got two fingers work. on the left, Okay. finger on there, and you're just going to walk it around. And for me, Now, because I'm smaller, I always lean it on my hip yeah. and it gives me triangulation. You might find that you're, you're strong enough that you can just hold it, but I find for my security, you can see yeah. without hands, I've got the bike and me connected yeah. and I use that to, to walk it around. So what, but this is a, well. a nice way to get the feel of your clutch and your throttle yeah. in a controlled environment. And very often we have to maneuver bikes around. We've got to move around in the yeah, garage, yeah. in petrol stations, Shall I give it a go? Let's start it first. You know what we're learning already? Yeah. That you have a concentration face. Do I? <laughs> yeah. My well, missus says that as yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Happy? Yeah. I'll do that again. Yeah? See, I've not touched the throttle on that yet. So you're just holding, are you just pushing it? No, I'm not just pushing it. <laughs> it's just downhill at that bit. Okay. Next exercise is actually riding the bike. You're going to be totally fine. You know how to ride a bike. It's a different shape, different size, different power, different terrain. So I'd say go and do some laps around the area we've got here. And then once you're feeling comfortable, you can see there's a series of cones. I want you to start slaling them. The key thing to think about with your weight on the bike, you're going to find your comfortable foot position. Yep. 
You want to find your balance point so that you're not pulling on your hands too much. If you're getting really tired fatigue hands, it's on. because your weight's too far back. You should be able to take your hands off okay. without wobbling and moving because you're balanced on the bike. Yeah. And uh, really, really tired hands, the sign is that you're, you're not finding your balance point right properly. Place. So just shift around of your weight, find that balance point, and then start to use your weight to go around the slalom. I am going to throw an extra challenge to that once you're doing it well. Okay. Go, go, go. <laughs> Explore this area. So this is a massive Welsh playground they've got here and they do all kinds of training days, experiences. So you can come and have a go on a on a Triger, on the Scramblers. If you're not sure whether they, they're what you want to commit to buy, this is a great place to come and have a go. But next okay. exercise, you're doing super well on the Salalem. How's it feeling? Really, really strange. If yeah. I'm honest, I didn't like it at first. Uh, but then, you know, when she just... The hard, to be honest, the hardest thing was making my fingers stay over the clutch and using that to, to moderate the output, you know, the engine's output. That was very counterintuitive to start with. So just, just riding around in circles there. It's not very, not very spectacular, but as a, as a way of understanding how to use that, that's, that's completely different. But yeah, it was difficult, but as in difficult to... Make Remember that your fingers that. are out. Yeah. Whereas I have the opposite brain where when I'm then on a track like with you or on the road, I have to try and remind my fingers to not be out oh, there because yeah, my on, fingers yeah. are just automatically yeah. like yeah, that's yeah, yeah, how yeah. I am. Yeah. And but it's road, muscle you want, memory. You want on the handlebars on the road for yeah. maximum power. You're feeling already why you have your fingers out. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Once I made myself do a few laps, it was, I'd really tell my fingers to stay there and use that instead of the throttle. It's all through, through about the fingers. A bit. Uh, okay, yeah. so you're doing really well on the slalom. Yeah. Let's up a game. Now, I'm telling you to use your body weight to steer the bike. Yeah. I need you to prove to me that you're using your body weight to steer the bike. Okay. So we're going to do a lap one handed. Right. And then if you're feeling comfortable with it, I realize it's very unique being one handed. Yeah. Do the slalom one handed as well. Okay. And that's using your body weight. So I right. guess you can follow me if you want. We'll, we'll go around. We'll go around. Yeah. Let's try that. That was... Bloody hell, that's difficult. That was amazing. That was really difficult. Really impressive. <laughs> but that was really good. And honestly, that exercise... It's a good exercise, yeah. It's, it's yeah. really good to yeah. make your brain properly realise how much yeah. you're using your weight. But it never really becomes comfortable. It's just horrible. Yeah, yeah, you're just constantly <laughs> crisis managing. <laughs> that's what it felt like. It's just one, you're lurching from one problem to the next. Next exercise is tight, slow control. Okay. Anybody can ride fast, right? Yes, they can. No, yeah. it's a joke. <laughs> you, the riding on the track stuff you do is mind-blowing impressive. But uh, there's a, it's a whole other skill, yes. riding slow. The balance and the use of that clutch and the feathering of that clutch is going to be really important to this. So I'm not going to get cones out straight away. But what we'll do is just try and do a tight circle. Really tight circle. Okay. And start big and then make it smaller okay. as you feel comfortable. Okay. And eventually, it's difficult on these big bikes, you'll get to the point where you're almost doing a full lock. You get on, almost on lock. And again, using your clutch, gentle throttle, feathering the power out, the rear brake is nice and useful for that. Okay. And if you think about the flywheel of the motorcycle, yeah. a little bit of a rev gives you a bit of stability. Okay. So yeah. having a little bit more throttle and then using the clutch more helps a little bit with that balance. Okay. And this is a very good exercise for you to practice at home. Every time you go out for a ride, try and focus on doing a couple of U-turns, yeah. turning around at the end of the road, going to the back of the Tesco car park. Round and round and round. And yeah, just yeah. practicing yeah. it, because it's really slow skill. And how many of us have been in a, you know, pulling up outside a cafe and had to do a tight turn and suddenly your heart's going. Yeah. A little bit of practice, you're no longer worried okay. by it. Okay. Okay, I'll try and show you first. You go first. Okay, so obviously first gear. First gear. <laughs> I 
and then the other way because you don't want one strong side. So. And you might get a sweat. <laughs> that was amazing. You know, that's so. And you always so have a, a stronger side. How is it? Well, it's difficult, bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I, I can feel myself sticking my tongue out, which is, a, which is a sign of maximum concentration. <laughs> it's amazingly challenging. Yeah. And then you, you're kind of counter steering with the bike and Can't the more confident it. you get, the more you lean it and they're big bikes to be doing it on. But again, so easy to practice in your everyday routine. Yeah. Okay, so we've done throttle, yes. we've done balance, yes. we've done steering, we've done clutch. Now I think we move on to brakes. Okay. It's all very well being able to go fast, but to go really fast, you need to be able to stop yeah. and then go fast again. Okay. So I'm guessing on a track bike, you're not used to skidding up. No. no so no, let's no. get you used to the feeling Skid. of skidding up. See if you see what just happened. So the bike brake, ABS on. I it? didn't stop. ABS. So I want you to feel what it's like going, I need to stop off road. Yeah. And my bike didn't stop. No. Was because that I had it on. Front that was just rear brake. Okay. Just right. rear brake to start with. Okay. So what you're going to do, press the M button on the left. Yeah, yeah. And put it across to off road. And then you hit the tick button to make it stay in that road. That will take ABS off. And now I will show you the difference. <laughs> so one thing you'll notice is that my back end squiggles. Yeah. There's a you want to learn to feel that because if you over brake, it can squiggle and spit you out. So there's a modular element to it. Okay. If you start to feel like you're losing line, you just come off a tiny bit and reapply and that finds your traction. Now at the moment, just use rear brake. Yeah. Then in a minute we're gonna do the same thing with the front brake. Obviously these bikes have ABS, it's yeah. a legal requirement. And then we're gonna do it with front and rear. Okay to make you realize how much braking power you have, have yeah. when you use Both. all of those discs. Okay. So I just turned first gear, accelerated in little second. Squirt. Little squirt. Little squirt. Yeah, in second. And then uh, right. smash those brakes on. Ah. Hey! <laughs> I probably should have told him that you need to pull your clutch in when you Stop really dramatically, but he learned that the uh, hard way with the stool. Nice! Getting used to that feeling of the back end having a little bit more play than you'd be used to on a track. But he's absolutely nailing that. And he started to squirm, released it, and applied the brake again. Mad, isn't it? Yeah, now do it front and back brake okay. at the same time and you'll stop even quicker. So as I'm as I'm stood here watching, you'll notice where he's stopping. When he was just using the rear brake, he was stopping over here. Front brake he stopped here. He should, if he applies the brake in the same place using both, stop even quicker. We'll see. How much stopping power you have? Oh yeah, that's, that's mad. It's mad. But without that's, doing that's, that's, a couple so... of minutes to feel those brakes at their extremes, you don't realise how much stopping power that's you have. So, I tell you what, I've, well, you said that first and I was like, <laughs> oh, this is going to go bad. But a lot of people are really stop. scared of their front brake. 
Now the front bake can spit you out for breakfast. Yeah, Once yeah. you start going on down hills and you've got the compression of the front suspension, as you're braking, yeah, it can yeah. be really jerky. So our next exercise is going to help us use our front brake more smoothly. So the long. next exercise First of all, we've got to go up the hill because we are at the wrong end of the hill for the exercise. We've so we're going to gonna super gentle yeah. throttle, standing up, solid position, first gear, look to the top and gentle throttle on the way up. Anticipate that your rear wheel might skid and bounce a little bit, but okay. just super gentle to the top. You'll be absolutely fine. So that's like a bonus exercise. We're bonus. just going to throw it in. Happy days. And then when we get to the top, we're going to be working on smooth, progressive braking control. It's very easy to grab brakes. Brakes are not on off. There are a million levels yeah. to a brake, both on your hand and your foot. And going down a hill like this is a really good way. Feel those brakes because you've obviously got gravity. You're going to be using your clutch so you don't stall. Yeah. And using your brakes. Try and focus on your front brake. Maybe try focus on your back brake. Focus on using the two together. But try and ride nice and slowly. As slow as you can go with keeping your balance. Yeah and try and keep it, bring it really down. smooth. Okay. You'll know exactly what I mean if you're a bit sharp because yeah. the bike will compress the we'll suspension. Protest. Okay. And I have absolutely no doubt in your abilities to go up there <laughs> and gravity will bring you down anyway. So. One way or another I'm coming back down it. Freaking Nora. Okay, so gentle braking, nice and slow. Yep. I don't feel you changed speed that much, but no, you probably felt like you did. But okay. no, it was good. Just another holding it in thing. So I suggest we now do the reverse of that. I can try it, let's see. So we are mashing up a few exercises into one hill. It is a big hill. Okay, talk so to me. The first one is gentle throttle control. Yeah. Pulling away and fighting the traction. Now we've got super good Michelin Anarchy Wild tires on here. This is what I run on my own adventure bike. It's okay. what I've done thousands and thousands of miles on. Very yeah. good tire. But unfortunately, tires are only as good as the riders using them. So gentle throttle control is going to give your tire the best hope to give you the grip. So the idea is to pull away and find the traction. If you just throttle it, it will spin up. Yeah. Let the rubber grip the and pull away super slowly and then stop again. Now, as soon as you stop, you're naturally going to want to pull on the brakes. Yeah. And I can almost guarantee, I'll test it in a second, that the bike will slide backwards. Okay. It won't stop you. Okay. Because your brakes won't have the same traction as your engine on biting point with the tyres. Okay. Hopefully I'll be able to demonstrate this. I'm going to start her up. So I'm going to pull forwards. So I'm gentle finding biting point, pulling forwards. Now I'm going to stop. Actually it's holding, no. It's, it's trying to slide. So I'm not kind of holding ground right now. No. That's my front brake and I'm sliding backwards, right? Yeah. So, but if I stop, I've got to find it, and hold biting point, yeah. right now, my rear tyre is what's holding me forward. Yeah. And so you can move forward, come to a stop, and go forwards. And then if you wanted to go backwards a little bit, for whatever reason, say you're doing a hill recovery, you can use the engine and the clutch to allow you to go backwards yeah. with control. Is there a break? Instead of using the brake, which we've just demonstrated, it's just gonna slide down. we'll just slide. Yeah. So, is it sliding? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, okay. and you're, I, this isn't that steep. Like, look, it's just going. That yeah. front's just locked, right? Yeah. Whereas by using the engine, I can hold it. So you're gonna be pulling forwards, coming to a stop, pulling forwards, and you can just hold it. And front brake. 
Yeah. If you panic, let go of the clutch. I'm just gonna go. Back. And your rear tire will then become a brake as well. You've got really long legs, so I don't imagine you having a yeah. problem. But you can see there's quite a few different things we've got going on there. Yeah. So pull up to here and then pull away and then stop where you are. Hold it. Get the. I would suggest get the feel of the pull away. Stop, pull away, stop, pull away, and yeah. then maybe on the second go, see how you feel. Okay. Then maybe try the rolling back. Is a bit freaky. Yeah. Because you're naturally like going backwards you on a hill. Pull more brakes on, don't you? Yeah, and okay. because you're strong and big, you might find just covering your brake gives you, your yeah. rear brake gives you a bit more security. For me, because yeah, the ground's yeah, a little bit yeah. further away, yeah. I like to just keep my feet down yeah. and know that I can drop the clutch. Because like right now I'm on the hill and the engine and the rear brake with the gear yeah. is holding it there. Uh -huh. Starting her up. I don't know how high up we'll be able to do this though, so. <laughs> because it gets steeper. Okay, are you ready? I think so. Okay, I'll move my bike. Okay, so we've got a stroppy McAvoy coming back down the hill now because I've told him he's got to do it one more time. He did really good. He got to the top of the hill, but he had too much throttle and he didn't feather the clutch. You can't really have too much throttle. He didn't feather the clutch, which means he spun up, he dug in and he made a hole in the ground. And if you've got it coming off gently, it will be a smooth pull away. And that is what he's going to do this time. Oh, the focus thing. Now it's worth noting that this exercise is of course something that you can do on your road bike on a hill. You don't have to be off-road, but it's really good control. Who parked a bike there? Yes! Beautiful! Beautiful! Let's go get coffee. We have finished the morning training. And how do you feel you went? I'm smiling. Yes! Uh, which, is the, which is the main <laughs> thing. And it's, it's, a, it's a less nervous smile. Um, but I'm, a, I'm acutely aware I'm still very much a novice. This is, this is a, a lot to take in in a short space of time. So, so far outside my comfort zone. It's not funny. But um, it's quite funny for me. I've I'm never, I, well, I'm sure it is, yeah. And I've had this, you know, I, I can't remember the last time I concentrated so hard on what probably on the outside appears to be such a, a simple task. Yeah. But it's actually really difficult. Uh, and yet you've been riding and racing, yes. doing incredible performance motorcycle riding for 30 plus years. Yeah, yeah around about that. Yeah. And suddenly you can get on a bike and be like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, it's yeah, incredible. Yeah, yeah. And I think something that I always emphasize to people is that you might not want to start doing off-roading and you might want, not want to go off on an adventure bike or do an enduro or trials, but having just a day yeah. of off-road training, doing some of the drills we've done today, the progression and confidence it can put into different disciplines of motorcycle riding is actually quite impressive. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, straight away, that all, all those little details and the, the control of the bike and yeah, how to use the levers differently to how you might on a road bike and, and all that kind of stuff is, is, is just all new. And I think the other thing that's really, really got my sort of imagination is this whole world that I knew existed, mm. yeah, I knew of, and, and always had a lot of appreciation for. Uh, when you watch the big rallies and stuff like that, they're, they're amazing things. You know, to have this first little sample of it, it's like this whole world is just opening up to me now that is like, wow, I, I quite like a bit more of that, if I'm honest. You hear that? He yeah, wants a little yeah. bit more off-road. I do, yeah. yeah <laughs> My work awesome. here is done. <laughs> <laughs> but actually it's not. We've done some training. You are looking super confident on the bike, even though you somehow make a Triumph Tiger look tiny. Whatever. Normal, normal. No, so I reckon we yeah. should go and explore some of the terrain they have here in Wales and get a little bit of a flow in, yeah. hit some terrain, maybe go over some of the things like we're sat on here 
and really think about all the things we've gone through. Yeah, progressive braking, gentle throttle, clutch control, using so your put body. It all into practice. And let's just go have some fun. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, I want you to look cooler now. I've got, my work, I've got my work cut out. <laughs> but there's a little <laughs> trick that I find. I have chronic hip pain from my accident. You have a hip replacement, hip yeah. buddies. Indeed. Um, although you don't have a limp anymore. No, I'm cured, I'm fixed. Yeah, but I'm good. there's a technique for getting on and off the bike that okay. massively helps my hip pain. Right. Helps with flexibility if you're not very agile. Helps if you have massive panniers on. Helps if you are vertically a little bit less tall. And Helps with I, cool factor. Helps with cool factor. It just looks pretty cool. You know, you're rocking up at a cafe and you're like, yeah, man. This is how I do it. Okay, I'm losing my coolness. I'm just going to show you. Just do it. So it's, a, it's right, an easy technique. We've focused on clutch, throttle, balance, braking today. Yes. It's putting all of that in together. Right. You're going to get on the bike as you ride away. Okay. So instead of being on the bike and riding away. Yeah. You're going to get on as you pull away. So, starter in gear. Yep, starter in gear. Let me put my helmet on. We've got to do safety first. I probably don't need goggles on, safety do I? Safety always first. There's plenty. Okay, so obviously you want the side stand up. Yeah. I'm going to turn her on. First gear, you're going to find that biting point so you can feel when it's starting to pull away. So, you know where that is. Obviously, the side on the peg that should be on the peg, don't put the wrong foot on, and then you're going to look ahead and pull away. And as you ride away, you get balance and you can swing your leg over. So that is how to pull away. And then you can stop in the same way. So you're pulling up, swing your leg back over and come to a stop. That clutch is what saves you. Okay. Clutch and brakes. Can't guarantee you'll be really cool, but you'll How be cool. I get than myself you are. into these situations. <laughs> get on your bike. I have actually seen someone do it where they put the wrong leg on. That's why I said like the, the left leg. You're gonna nail it straight away. Oh! <laughs> that was good. That wasn't. Woo -hoo -hoo! Nailed it, nailed it. He looks a little bit cooler now. <laughs> like a ball. Does that make me cool? Yeah, it actually does. It does look pretty cool. Pretty badass. <laughs> I was actually um, really nervous. <laughs> That's, that is not easy. Just like rubbing your head and tapping your tummy to kind do. of thing. So you've disappointed my expectations today. <laughs> Sorry to let in you down. He, he hasn't dropped his bike, but having the confidence to know that you know how to pick it up is another really good lesson in off-road riding. So let's lie the beast down and then we will show you effectively four different ways to pick up a bike. Okay, that really hurts me to watch that. Yeah, but he's got all the crash bars on. It's just and wrong. I've laid him it's down just really wrong. gently. Uh, okay, so there's four ways to pick up a bike. Okay. And you need to work out what works for your body. Right. There's a lot of keyboard warriors on the internet will say there's only one way to pick up a bike. Yeah. Nonsense. Right. Your body, your bike, what terrain you're in. If I was in here or in the ditch or halfway up the hill, it will totally Different vary. Yeah. But practicing it on yeah, yeah. easy ground will make it much easier when you have to do it on there for the first time. Yep. So the first way, which is the easiest way for my body, dodgy hip, is a forward squat. I do it with an open hip because then it enables me not to put this one into pinch mode. Key thing is engaging the wheel on all of them because the first part of the lift, you've just engaging the wheel. Bars in, grab handle at the back. Depending on your bike, it's going to be slightly different. So engaging the wheels, which means I'm just stepping in, straight back 
And the key is that you're powering it with your big muscles. Yeah. So my legs are doing all the work. Not that you're going to have any issues. Look at the size of you versus me. Well, you said it now. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> and then lower it back down. You can see I'm not using my arms. My right. arms are straight. Yeah. That last bit is my arms. But okay. this bit, lowering it and it's lifting it, is all the big leg muscles. Yeah, okay. And straight back. So, lie them down again. Okay. And then, your turn. So, one hand on there. Yep, and one hand at the back. Lower, lower your body down a bit. Like that. Straight back. So easy. It's easy when you've got massive muscles. <laughs> okay, lie back down again. Oh, yeah. That's only the first way. You've got to do it three more times. Perfect. Fight. Okay, so the next way is a handlebar. <laughs> okay. Now at the moment, if I lift the handlebar, the wheel's gonna change, it's not engaged. So you just gotta bear in mind the angle of it. You also gotta bear in mind these, um, they like private parts. Right. <laughs> so you're gonna get into quite a tight squat. This is the one that my hip doesn't always like very often, but engage the wheel, so that's that first part. So Again, straight back, and then, oh, see, the, the wing wheel's gone straight in my, Get my leg around it. <laughs> All right. See, I don't like that when you've got wing mirrors, but often on an off-road bike, you wouldn't have these wouldn't on have because them. they're a bit sacrificial. Okay. So when you say engage the wheel, that means like it's so, on like getting right the wheel now, on the ground. That's, the, that's the, right now, the wheel's not on the ground. Right, so that needs to be... So if I tried to pick it up this way, yeah. it changes the, the, the right, bars. Right, so you're getting the wheels into... Right. The wheels need to grip to be able to then pull up on top of them. But the, yeah, the wing mirrors are really awkward. What's it going to do to you? Straight back, straight back. Jesus. <laughs> I don't like that way. But sometimes that's, that's the you, easiest that's way. And sometimes that's the easiest way. It completely depends on how the bike's fallen, whether you're yeah. in a tree or a ditch or a yeah. rock or in deep sand or mud. I'm put it down that way because I don't like that way. No. So number three, I probably can't demonstrate because of my hip. Okay. Just this is the it. one that the keyboard warriors will say is the only way to pick up a bike, but they don't have a reconstructed body. So you're going to, again, engage the wheels. So you're just doing it like the first way, but backwards. <laughs> yeah. It's, I so don't, that's quite I don't, low It's squat. not worth my hip pain. No, don't. don't. So you're so going to hold it. it there. So I think I might struggle with that with my Deep new hip. squat. I'm, no. no, it hurts straight away. I, uh, um, and then you lift it up. Did, I, did, I, might, I might bail out of this one as well, because I've not done We're like a right pair of cripples, <laughs> aren't we? Should we do it together? <laughs> So. Oh, you just make it look so easy anyway. Look at you with your fancy new hip. <laughs> High five. <laughs> don't drop the bike though. Not yet. <laughs> okay. I still cool. don't think I like that one. But For yeah. some people they prefer it, but I don't know many people that have full power in a deep squat. No. Not my but yet age. everyone says you've got to do a back squat. No. Depends on your body. Okay, back, back down again. I've nearly gone all the way around. <laughs> So some people will say you've always got to put it in gear or not in gear or put the side stand down. Depending on how you Ooh, drop your bike, you might not have the ability to do that. So I always say practice without the comfort of knowing the, the side stands down so that when it, it's not there, yeah. it doesn't scare you. Sure. Um, so the last way, which is the fourth way, is to ask a friend. So we do it together. <laughs> okay. Why not? So, so what do you, do you want me to get? You, you do the handlebars and I'll do the back. And then one, two, three. And magically, the bike is half the weight. Imagine. And What's the chances of that? There you go. So that's how you pick up okay. a bike. Now, I've been a little bit too easy on you today because you haven't actually had an off yet. And off-road, I always say it's just a matter of when, not well, a matter of when. losing the name is off. So I think we should go up there next. Yeah, okay, go on then. You show me how to do it. Okay. You go first. Cool. So you've got to make sure you put it in off-road pro mode. Yeah. So all the traction control yeah. is off. Look at the top. If you look down at the bottom, you'll probably fall at the bottom. And be prepared for your back end to have a little bit of a party. Okay. The bike's back end. Show me how it's done. Ah, so I think I scared, <laughs> scared him off. That was a pretty cool hill climb. It's probably worth mentioning that the Triumph Adventure Centre 
is perfectly set up for all ranges, whether you're a complete novice through to wanting to do some more technical hill climbs like this. They've got all the bikes, all the kit. I've had an absolutely epic time here and hopefully had the opportunity to share with you some really basic but very, very fundamental foundations to off-road riding that will increase your riding capability, confidence, skill across any type of riding that you do, whether it's off-road or on a track. I think John might have got the bug for off-road as well, so I think we might be seeing him getting muddy again in the future, which to me is like mission success. Let me know if you've got any questions in the comments below, and also if you have any drills or exercises that you really enjoy doing, let me know. Do you think I've missed something? Are there any of these that you find particularly hard? Get in the comments. I love to hear from you. And don't forget to tick the bell so that you get notifications when new videos come out because I don't want you to miss them. I'm Vanessa Ruck, the girl on a bike, here on Triumph Tiger again with Fast Bikes, Michelin and John McAvoy. Hope you've enjoyed watching.